All right, very good. So, this is the second uh, seminar I gave. So, I think it was about one year ago, well, more than one year ago, that I gave my first one when still this project was still a project, so like a plan of tasks and things that I wanted to do. So, I'm happy now, after some time, to give a uh, stop of the actual things that I've been doing in the past year. So, um, we are talking about geological carbon storage, uh, which I guess everyone here knows what it's about. So, I will just comment that about the majority of the operational projects worldwide are based on an story recovery. Uh, which uh, it is believed was the past, but not really the future of geological carbon storage because it's just subsidizing the oil company. So I'm actually more, I think the, the technology is moving on another direction, which is uh, mineral storage. So uh, I'm interested in this carbon mineral storage, which consists in injecting the CO2, not in conventional reservoirs, but in uh, uh, highly reactive uh, mineral formations like basalt and traumatic rocks. So that the trapping is mainly uh, in the form of uh, mineral trapping. So this is the basic uh, chemistry. So what happens is that this, uh, this acidic solution of CO2 is injected into these highly reactive uh, rocks and this promotes the resolution of the resident rock and then as soon as uh, the, 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 the solution proceeds then cations are released and then the pH is announced until at a point where there are the favorable conditions for carbon precipitation. So this technology has two major advantages. The first one is to increase storage security, as I mentioned before. So trapping is made in the form of, uh, in the form of solubility and mineral trapping. And this has been, uh, has, been, uh, has been shown and that has been published a few years ago, mainly uh, from Iceland, and they, they show that uh, about 95% of the injected CO2 can mineralize in about two years, which is, which, which is quite crazy from my point of view, because usually when we talk about uh, mineral trapping in conventional reservoirs, we think of uh, hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, of the years. And the second reason, and that this could uh, significant, significantly expand the opportunities for, for CO2 storage also in location that has not been traditionally considered. So, the main, uh, the crucial thing for this technology to work is to increase the pH. So, this balance between the acidic uh, uh, solution which is injected and the uh, basic conditions which are needed to induce the precipitation is like really the the the, 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 the crux of the of the of the technology. So this is the general background. Then my specific interest is on biomineralization. So the idea is to use the bacteria to increase, uh, to alter the reaction rates and increase, uh, increase the pH so that this, uh, the entire process can happen uh, faster. Um, this for two, again, for two reasons. The first one is that the bacteria can enhance the pH, for example, using this uh, Bacillus prostagina pastori, which is used to catalyze the hydrolysis of urea, and this hydrolysis of urea produces uh, ammonia, which then consumes uh, protons to produce uh, ammonium. So this protonation increases the, the pH. And the second, and this process is called bioalkalinization. 
so the biologically induced uh, enhancement of the pH. And the second, uh, the second reason for that the, the biological, uh, the bacteria enhance the process is that they can serve as uh, nucleation sites. So that the bacteria can retain the calcium ions, the cations which are released during the dissolution. So the bacteria can really help for retaining the, 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 these cations near the, near the, the grains. So then we can have nucleation sites for precipitation. So this is the physical background. And then the goals of my research so far were in general to develop poor scale models for all these uh, uh, coupled flow and uh, reactive transport processes. And then specifically to apply this model to model the subsurface biomineralization in reactive silica drops. So now let's jump into the model. So there are three main ingredients of the model. The first one is the uh, flow and transport solver. So I use here the micro continuum approach, which is which was developed a few years ago by Cyprian Sulen and Hamdi Chalepi. And this is very uh, advantageous for uh, solving flow and transport on this uh, on these geometries because we have a sort of two porous media in the same in the same medium. One is the classical is the classical pore space, and the second one is the is the near grain zone where we have uh, biomass growth and we have this uh, this uh, this uh, carbonate mineral which precipitates. So this is like a a, a smaller a porous medium within the porous medium. So then with this approach we can solve uh, the Stokes flow in the pore space and the Darcy flow in this uh, in this uh, sub-micron uh, pore space in a single in a single equation by introducing uh, this uh, indicator function phi which is one uh, when, the, when, uh, when we are in the pore space and then it's uh, it's uh, it's bounded between zero and one when we have this this uh, sub micro world or space. The second ingredient is the reactive uh, modeling of the reactive transport. So these two slides are uh, for the special interest of, of Martin. So I'm using the method of the components, which I guess most uh, also most of people here know. So the the basic idea is to take advantage of the equilibrium reactions to reduce the number of, uh, of global transport equations by introducing this component matrix uh, U. So then we solve the reduced number of equations at the global level, and then we go locally to solve a nonlinear system where we have the definition of the components and the uh, mass action laws. So this is the general model, then this is particularized to the uh, application case. We have uh, uh, three uh, kinetic reactions, the solution of the resident rock, the precipitation of the carbonates, and the ureolysis, and then we have two equilibrium, two equilibrium reactions. Uh, so in the end we have uh, eight chemical species, two equilibrium reactions, and then six, six components, of which three are the nice and three are the, are the nasty ones using Martin's nomenclature. Um, so this is the second ingredient. The third ingredient is the modeling of the of the of the biomass. So this is a basic. Uh, this is a basic model. So we have uh, a biomass which is present in two forms. One is a suspended bacteria which are carried by the flow using the standard attraction diffusion uh, reaction equation. And then we have the biomass which is, which is immobile around the, around the mineral grains. And then we have mass exchange terms. So we have attachment and we have uh, growth uh, model with uh, with monokinetics and then we have uh, decay both uh, uh, 
self-endogenous decay and encapsulation into the, into the pulse. Very basic model. And then the first one is how we update the, the porosity, so how we update the, the porous microstructure. So this one is a, is a variable in the problem. So this, uh, this fee, this indicator function, is updated throughout the computations depending whether we have dissolution, precipitation, or biomass growth. Uh, this is uh, the next how the problem is uh, how the problem is solved. I use a sequential iterative approach. So where we first uh, uh, we start from a known uh, known field and then we calculate the uh, advection diffusion reaction operators. We solve the global problem and then after solving the global problem, we solve in the local uh, the local system so that we can update the chemical parameters. Solve the transport, the microbial transport in a two-step uh, two way, first for the nutrient, then for the biomass, and then we advance to the next step. Uh, flow is not, uh, is not always updated, but on, only when there is a significant uh, change in the, in the porous microstructure, for example, 1% uh, change. It's just a little bit of computational power. Uh, this is the code, so the code is, uh, is open source, uh, is on, on uh, GitHub, on the, the GHS, uh, on the GHS group, so now it has discretization for flow and transport, and the grid is, uh, is, uh, is done automatically, and then basically we just give as input the, the physical, the chemical, and the data for the, for the solver. Uh, application case. So uh, the model is quite complex. Uh, although I try to keep the, the individual model components simple, so a simple geochemical system, a simple biomass uh, model. But then all the all the three ingredients are all coupled. So the, the, in the end, the model is quite complex. So I just went for a for an ideal cross geometry, which is used in uh, in several. Uh, application cases of problem of this type. Uh, so I keep uh, flow conditions in the low Reynolds number regime and take uh, initial and boundary conditions which are relevant to CO2 storage in uh, in this uh, in this type of uh, of reactive rocks. Um, these are the geochemical system. I studied the two cases, one without uh, biomass. So on the left panel, there's the abiotic case where we only have two uh, kinetic reactions, the dissolution and precipitation. And then on the right panel, we have the case with the, with the biomass, which gets uh, a bit more complex. And then in particular, I study the effects of this parameter KUB, so our ureo is the rate of ureolysis, and KUB, is, it has the meaning of the content of your, it's, it's a ratio of urease content to the biofilm, which is about in the order of between 1, 000 and, uh, 1 per thousand and 1 per hundred, so which gives an indication of the content of the enzyme urease, which is the enzyme that catalyzes the the, the ureolysis, and then in turn, if this, this KUB is higher, that means that we have more ureolysis, so more production of ammonia, the symptom provokes more enhanced protonation, so the, in principle, the greater KUB, the more uh, precipitation one should have because the pH uh, increases. Uh, so these are the, uh, some, uh, some results. Two interesting things to note. The first one is that the calcite take place on the on the stagnation on the stagnation point where the ions are retained, and then there's enhanced precipitation with enhancing K this parameter KUP, which was I was uh, explaining the, the slide before, and also this uh, this precipitation increases downstream because more ions are uh, available due to the flow processes. This slide is a bit more, more interesting, so this gives the full explanation of the, of the 
geochemical pattern that I was explaining before. So if, if we increase KUP, now I forgot to put the, I forgot to put the y axis. Apologize. Uh, so we increase KUB, so we have more uh, urease content on the biofilm. And this one is the, this should be the ammonia. So then uh, the greater KUB, the more uh, hydrolysis of urea we have, so more production of ammonia. So if the ammonia increases, then we have more enhanced protonation. Uh, so the pH increases, which is this one. And as the pH increases, the, this is CO3, this is the carbonates, the carbonates increases. So if we have more carbonate, then in turn we have more, more precipitation. And there is here a shift for about KUB greater than uh, 2 per thousand. You can see how things change from the blue and red to the yellow and the green. Because then we, there's, a, there's a shift in the carbonate to the carbonate equilibrium. So we go from uh, acidic conditions where CO2 is dominant to conditions where also carbonate and decarbonate uh, play. Uh, so this result has been recently recently published, so if you want to take a look, apologize again for forgetting the, the, the why, which is terrible for my side. <laughs> <laughs> which it does it. So these are, the, these are the conclusions. So the main idea is to use the biological catalyst to increase the, to increase the pH of the solution, so to and ask the carbon mineralization. <laughs> this is done by the bacteria glyrolysis, which promotes the uh, protonation, then shifting the carbon, the carbon equilibrium towards the production of more carbon ions. Uh, first, the model of flow and biogeochemical active transport was developed and then applied to, uh, to, to, to study uh, the surface biomineralization. Uh, ongoing work, so this was like the first, uh, let's say, the first part of the overall project of all the things that I would like to do. So currently I'm uh, trying to integrate in this with the experimental results and also to uh, what Marek is doing to advance uh, the modeling of the biofilm uh, growth and all the biological processes. And um, yeah, that's it. And I'm uh, happy to take questions. Any questions? Okay. And, uh, thanks for the talk. So I'm sorry if I missed part of it, but uh, I'm just curious about the details of the bit, so what kind of uh, in fact, you think like what are the finite volumes? Finite volumes. And what things? What do we have? Uh, Cartesian grid. Okay. Yes. So two point flux approximation for the for the Laplacian. Mm -hmm. And aqui with affection. And the implicit in that? Uh, no. It's uh, it's sequential. It's sequential. So it's uh, so it's fully implicit for the. It is. Uh, it, I, I suppose it is implicit because otherwise it doesn't make sense to iterate. It was you, I would say. Uh, semi implicit, yeah. I would say. Okay. So it's implicit in the solution of the single equations. Yeah. So, of course, the advection diffusion reaction is solved implicitly, but then the way it is, uh, it is a couple, the, like the, the biomass, the nonlinearity is ah, yes. solved sequentially. Okay. I, I'm, I'm actually being kind of explicit stuff, but I know that in practice when you have all these complicated uh, chemical systems, it can be difficult. So, it, uh, do, you have a lot, do you have a lot of trouble with the 
instability. I have a lot of trouble in instability with the, with going with the geochemical speciation, yeah. especially initially when to get the simulation start and like the initial steps because the solution of Newton Ramson is highly highly sensitive to the initial mess. But uh, yeah, but, uh, so this one was the major. I already took a note of the papers. Thank you. Yeah, uh, follow up on what said. So, how do you estimate this initial guess for the Newton Russian as the first decision? The initial guess, I think I start with the, with the, with the initial conditions. With the current volume? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the initial the previous conditions. time step, or maybe. Hmm? Or the previous time step. Uh, the previous time step, oof, I think it's initially it was like a bit of trial and error. So I started with a time step, but then the, the first uh, Newton Opson crashed, so I decreased, decreased until it works, and then after some steps, then I could uh, easily increase the time step because then it was. No, no, I mean, to take the initial guess. The initial guess is. Uh, the, For the initial guess, there's no previous time step. It's the initial conditions. No, but I mean, no. I don't think the initial guess for the primary species of temperature. The current value, I guess, you know, if, 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 if you do it, if you do it, it's previous time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here you are decoupling the transport and the chemical reaction, right? So first you solve the transport for the components. I the transport. I solve first this one. Uh, this one using RK from the previous time step. And then I solve this one, I have the new U. And then I solve this one locally. This one is the one where I have the instabilities with the, with the newton Raphson. And so this gives a C. And then the C is used to reactivate. So first you compute the U, then you compute yeah. the C from the U, and then you compute the RK, which depends on C. Yeah. It's a standard sequence. Center, yeah. 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 So this is you. You coded the thing you like from scratch, or you use it? I coded it from scratch. Yes. So I start. When you're not really using numpy and cpy. In Okay. So you're using the methods. Yeah, Python. Yes. Is it going to be the same? As for a different thing. You mentioned in one of the slides this parameter of phi. Phi, phi, yes. It's close in RC. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if the value is between 0 and 1, yes. what does it mean? It does it mean that then this term becomes relevant? So in the end, you saw Darcy's flow. While if uh, if p is one, then this term goes to zero, and you recover the Stokes equations for for the yeah. But for so this like uh, like an approach where you run some three different sets of equations for three different sets. Exactly, you solve the single equation regardless of, uh, of where you are in the in the domain, and then the the the, the, the blocks and then the this this. Uh, Micro cross media treated like inverse boundary, and everything is handled by this uh, this um, function, which is a volume of fluid, a volume of solid function. Yeah, so, it reminded me of volume of fluid. Exactly, it's uh, yeah, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Mm -hmm. but, you, but then you have like a transition, like uh, you have the cells where phi is minus zero to one. Yes. Uh, yes. You well, the, yes. Yeah. And then let's say initial conditions. Well, okay, of course. I start know. with uh, I start with zero one. Yeah. So not well, yeah zero one. Blue is zero, which is not really zero. It's like some 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 tolerance like I don't know, one minus three. And, and then the red is one, the fluid region. So these are the initial conditions zero one. And then as the as the simulation goes, then this speed changes. According to the yeah, to, to the different uh, reactions that you can have, but it's a new term. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what is the importance of pressure when you compare this to type of system with the bioremediation and the normal one? Big, uh, big, uh, big question, big issue. Yes. So, well, for now, and the modeling part it just assumes uh, normal uh, ambient and virtual conditions and these things. Of course, when uh, when you go to real reservoir condition, then this becomes uh, this becomes a challenge. And this is uh, I'm not even sure myself that if this bacteria can can survive this uh, this environment. There are some studies that they indicate that uh, that, that they might survive until a certain temperature pressure, but. Uh, the answer is that I don't know. I mean, numerically, uh, uh, I think it would be no no major problem to account for all this. I just need to extend it. Can you check at least temperature in Cochina the bacteria can survive? The bacteria can survive for sure. There are a few papers that indicate it, but uh, I think a range of 10 megapascal or something. Temperature maybe until 50 or 70. Yes. Very few studies. Uh, the reality is that this has not been uh, studied much. Because in the initial map, you show at the beginning when you see all, all these rocks that are all dropping, or different places where you find new rocks, the temperature is going to be very different mm -hmm. in, the, in these locations mm -hmm. because of the geological origin. So yeah. I think that the temperature is an important issue to consider here because it, it uh, indicates where you can perform it or not in, in that time. It, uh, it, it definitely, definitely is, yes. Yeah. But usually you, you inject in uh, this CO, but when CO2 is in the, in the, how do you say, in a uh, supercritical? supercritical state, which has a certain Temperature I think pressure. That, I think these are not the conditions for this. The people in Iceland didn't use supercritical CO2, they used the dissolved CO2. I think okay. there are two, there were two, yeah. two pilot projects uh, of this okay. technology, and the people in Iceland used dissolved CO2. And then there is uh, another project in the US, and they're using supercritical CO2. Then, in that case, you need also multi -phase, uh, a multi phase flow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But this is quite, uh, it says, quite a recent, uh, recent field and was uh, trying to do the modeling part, but then this heavily relies on the experiments. And the idea is to inject the bacteria with the CO2 to produce all the bacteria. Well, the idea, well, that I don't know. Uh, I guess first to inject a colony and then see if they survive, and then after that, after the biofilm is already full, then to check it. Um, the simulation I'm doing, they take, they assume there's an initial, an initial biofilm covering it. I mean, there are several thermal springs where thousands of uh, bacteria are found, and then the families, and so pretty sure that you can find in the indicators of all those medium flow or uh, but I think this, uh, yeah, they should be, they should be studied experimentally. And that, that is my, my next question. I mean, in terms of you know, check that in the laboratory, let's say in AC conditions, any ideas about how you are going to do that? I'm probably not the right person eh, to ask about how to do things in the lab. <laughs> I can only, I can only give you a literature review. But, uh, <laughs> Myself, I don't know, but uh, there's not much. Eh? It's already it's already a lot. If people can just uh, uh, run experiments of flow in micro models, this is like people in Zurich uh, doing it. But last year, so coupling with the reactions, uh, I wouldn't know. No, I'm mean, thinking about the next step. Great, thinking about how to move to the next step to be closer to the reality. Okay. Miguel, do you know which is the impact of the calcium precipitation in the metabolic conductivity and also in the... Uh, I didn't... Uh, well, I didn't get to that point. 
Well, let's say if in my simulation is nearly zero, so I'm really precipitating uh, uh, very small, very small quantities. It just was a very small strip. But it's the ideal condition, so I'm precipitating very little. So this would be almost zero effect on the on the overall conductivity. But uh, but definitely, definitely it will have. Definitely it will have in, in, in both ways when when it dissolves. And when it precipitates, when the biofilm clogs, so this will have a huge, uh, huge impact. No, just, just because I, I suppose uh, Guido asks, yeah. because he had a, a, a very little calcium precipitation in experiment, it was a basic reasonable effect, quite a big effect actually. Now, even though the velocity doesn't change too much, they are to the... Yes, definitely, because if uh, the... I, yeah, I, I remember what I think we discussed uh, during the. I think yes, if if, if the if the clogging is localized, then the porosity at the global scale doesn't change much. But this small clogging completely changed the, the, the flow. So yeah. yeah, it's interesting where the, the you can calculate where the precipitation takes place in, in at the pore scale. No? Yes, you can you can visualize it. Yes, usually when. There's, uh, I mean, to me, it's interesting. You said it was not so very interesting, but I think it's quite interesting. This <laughs> where where it uh, precipitates, it's somewhere it, the, between the between the pores. On the in this uh, yeah, no on, flow the, on, on the flow, yes, this was the first uh, observation yesterday. It's, uh, well, okay, it makes uh, it makes sense now. So that is uh, the ions which are dissolved remain in place; they are not carried away by the flow. So this, uh, that can grow the, the effects because it's it's near the uh, the the grain let's say where it precipitates no? at, at the middle yeah uh, but uh, yeah exactly I and mean, in this place where there is no flow yeah yeah so I think it was that yeah then there is this solution but then the calcium ions the cations remain here they are not flushed away so then this can uh, can contribute to an increase. Uh, Derek, and this, uh, this picture is representative of a specific pore volume, or is it a steady state uh, scenario of this problem? Uh, this is a sort of uh, a sort of uh, steady. I wouldn't call it a steady state because it's uh, it, it's, it's not steady. It's still the, the calcium yeah. volume, but this is a sort of equilibrium uh, equilibrium config configuration where the where the, the different uh, complexes uh, get. Uh, Get uh, yeah, the equilibrium set to this state. All right. Yeah. So, so I guess my question was, uh, would this model uh, approach the two years mineralization you mentioned before? So far, is, is there any indication that this could be the case? Uh, th these are completely, a completely different, uh, completely different, uh, different scale. Uh, uh, well, it's it's the simulation can replicate it, but uh, I mean I'm only studying a, a small, a small, a small pore. Yeah, yeah. it's difficult to, to project to this. Okay. But the, the 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 idea, yes, this would be to to build up on this. No, so this one is only a. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple model, it's a simple geometry which gives you perfect uh, uh, means for, for investigating the processes and then with, with, with expanding the computational power, not only running the simulation on an ideal geometry but on a real, uh, on a real uh, sample in a rock and then from that develop uh, upscale relations that would give would give uh, would give uh, input data for the for the large scale and then maybe yeah, it's, it's because eventually get the, 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 the two years. But by looking at these results it seems like in one minute the system is balanced somehow, right? The 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 axis the x axis of these figures is correct. 
It is uh, yes, but okay. that, that's right. because well, it's, it's, uh, it's because it's the it's, it's the time that uh, a particle travels from the inlet to the out, outer right. pretty much. But then this one is uh, what is it one millimeter maybe uh, the, the, the real scale is kilometers. So So then you but I have some questions. So first of all, regards for the method, how do you estimate the, re the reliability of the method? So how do you compare your significant result with experimental data? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do it now. It's, it's the next step of this one. So this one, I did the model validation using uh, numerical benchmarks yes. from the literature. So I have a benchmark for the reactive transport, benchmark for the flow, uh, but then to compare to real experimental data, this is the, the, the next step. And I'd like to know what's the efficiency of, what's the efficiency of your final model, how, to, uh, how long it takes to, to, uh, to finish a simulation case? Several hours or several days or several days? No, not, uh, not several days. Not several days. I think the longest one on uh, about one day. Monday, but, for but it was on my on my laptop, so probably would be even faster if you will. But then it depends on the on the on the grid resolution. Yeah, and another point I'm very curious about is how do you how does your method to determine the nucleation size of a carbonate? This one I'm I'm not there yet. So all the grain surface is a nucleation site as it is now. I think that one is. I think that's one of the key problem. Uh, one of the key issues have not been uh, understood very well. Uh, I think that point has not been fully understood and it is still understudied. Uh, I think it's very difficult to determine the nucleation site of of, of a. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely, it's, uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, properly understood. Definitely. So, so in your method, if you determine the size by where the uh, Belton, uh, the location of Belton is the location size, you method? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yes. So every every mineral fluid uh, surface area is is uh, it's a potential location size. Yeah, and in your uh, method, how to determine the reaction rate? The reaction rate. Oh, yeah. I took it from uh, from the literature. So for cal I took it from the literature. A uh, literature. So for calcite precipitation. Is it a constant? Uh, there's a, for calcite. There is a constant, but then depends on the activity of yeah, the yeah, calcium yeah. and CO2. Yeah, sure. And this, uh, th this is where the the, the coupling. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the rate of normalization. Yeah, so it's uh, so in here. So the rate of, of calcite precipitation depends on the concentration. Yes, yes. So this is really is it, is it from the transition state theory? Uh, the term in, uh, no, just uh, the model is from Chu, 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 Chu et al. Uh, it's, it's like a constant times the product of the activities yeah. divided by the solubility constant. Okay. And standard. Uh, and uh, about your conclusion, so uh, your study has indicated uh, to which extent the um, um, the bathroom makes a difference. It is large or it is very negative. Well. <laughs> The simulation show that is uh, it's quite a big effect. Here is about two orders. Two orders. Of course, this can be taken with a bit of salt because we are in ideal ideal conditions. But uh, but it, it definitely it definitely makes uh, definitely contributes to enhance the, the pH and therefore to, to enhance the precipitation. Yeah. Uh, two, okay. I think the time scale is seven. But uh, I, I you mean in the first slide, you, uh, you see that it takes at least two two years to. Well, two years at the at the scale of a reservoir. 
which is uh, order of kilometers. So here I'm only standing, uh, what is it, one centimeter? Did I put, yeah, one centimeter? Yeah, and one millimeter. So. And my last question is here. So then it takes, it takes uh, what is it, seconds, or about seconds, one minute, let's say, to travel one centimeter. Okay. And my last question is that your down equation, you said that there is a density. There is a dust and blue, yeah. Uh, yeah, the second law. Uh, in the dust this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is the transport. Yeah. Uh, Darcy is this term here. Okay. Here is the permeability. I mean, the second, the, uh, the, five, D, C. This yeah. one is the yeah. diffusion. Uh, but if, but in the, uh, in the Darcy zone, I think the diffusion should be dispersion coefficient. Uh, it's, uh, it's, let's say, it's, yeah, D, D is the diffusion in water, and then there is this phi which is added to give the, to give the effect of the top loss. Yeah, it's kind of upscale. I and mean, for Darcy, uh, for Darcy, so the, uh, the, 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 the orange color, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the D should be dispersion coefficient. This is a weird scale, no? Like it's yeah. a small scale. Yeah. Spreading reduce actually in that scale. Yeah. When you don't have full porosity. Yeah. That's so correct. so actually with the number you cannot resolve the full scale of flow. There will be the effect of dispersion. So there will be dispersion coefficient rather than diffusion coefficient. It's still a very small scale, right? So yeah, maybe it's not that important at this, at this scale. Maybe it's not that important at this version. Right. Because you sort of explicitly simulate the the heterogeneity in the it's, in the It's problem. a very very small. Uh, this can go to submicron resolution. So yeah, I don't know how much. Yeah. So why don't Stokes have you? Just why not stocks it. everywhere? But then uh, why not stocks everywhere? Because then I need this 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 fee for the right. Because then you don't know what to do with the processing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. If, you, if you, you could probably go to stocks everywhere if you were in, in, in at the, at at a, at a grid resolution, yeah, yeah. but the resolution is the same of the of the carbonates and stuff. So then uh, then the single voxel become. This so, like, but this is, would be, I think, impossible. This is like Darcy at micro porosity level or something like this. Uh, exactly, exactly. It's like a porous medium, a porous medium within a porous medium. Yes. So, yeah. it's, 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 it's counter intuitive. Okay. No? Usually, Darcy uses the larger, here you use it at the smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have two last questions. Um, so, the first one is on slide 30. Um, I didn't fully understand what the mu of n term represents. 13? Yeah, yeah, the mu of n term, I didn't fully understand it. Mu is, uh, is uh, more of kinetics, it's the growth. So it's how the, the nutrient is consumed and how the, the biomass grows. It's a, it's a parameter of the rate law. So it's not, it's, a, it's not a function, yeah, it's a parameter. It's, uh, no, it's a function. And you of n is the molecule. But what is the expression of mu? Uh, I think it depends on the molality and some uh, some constant. Uh, ah, so is it the term when you have like the um, TA terms and the inhibition terms and the logistic term maybe for yeah. much? Is it that one? No need. Okay, yeah, yeah. So and and the scale. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We're having the, the division terms, the PA, it's okay. Yeah, and the other question is for uh, for the America the um, code. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you put data that you use? Did you work it yourself like with ad hoc files or did you read it from uh, some programs like FreeC for example? No, I have not uh, right now. No external uh, interfaces, so I just uh, everything is done so within the same. 
Yes. But I think you put the oh, fine and run it. Yes. <laughs> but I think you told me that you were planning on. Uh, I would like to. Really from I, I would like to. Yes. One it's, uh, it's, uh, I heard uh, this this word most question. <laughs> but yeah, of course. Uh, you use a bacteria when you give it. Okay. Do you have any particular reason to choose that bacteria? Is it optimal for your? Uh, in terms of the in terms of the modeling and the simulation. Uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't make uh, it, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Just uh, just input the, the numbers. But uh, this is the what, what is really used in in uh, in uh, uh, it's called MICT microbial induced uh, cell precipitation. And they and they use this technology usually for sealing uh, fractures or, or cracks uh, near the, near the wells. And then they, they use this uh, they use this this uh, this bacillus this bacteria because it can uh, uh, operate in uh, in the dark subsurface environments and it can sustain the operating conditions. Mm -hmm. So it has these these two advantages. The first one is that it can uh, it, it, con it contains this, this enzyme UAS that can catalyze the releases, and the second one, it can operate in uh, the subsurface. Okay. So he goes the Thanks for having me.